Have you had breakfast? Good. After this much time, I'd be surprised if you hadn't adjusted. You were out of your depth when you first started, but now it seems second nature to you. I didn't think you would get involved in my work when I brought you here. I only needed someone to ensure the house was looked after. <laughs> I wouldn't go so far as including myself in that. Still, you've surpassed my expectations, and you've improved in all aspects. Like time management, cooking, cleaning, you know how to do it well. And you make a perfect cup of coffee each time. Mmm, today's no different. Weren't you talking about making a dessert at some point? Hmm, and you still won't tell me the reason, will you? No, you're allowed to have your own secrets. I'm not obligated to know it. That would be an abuse of my power. I may have done an extensive background check on you, but that doesn't mean I need to know everything you do and think. The check was to ensure you being here wouldn't complicate things. Well, I don't know how to say this gently, but I needed to make sure you wouldn't be missed. You had no connections and a poor way of living, so you suited being here. I also think it's a step up from how you were before. Would you say you're familiar with your new life? I know I've given you strict boundaries, but you should understand my reasoning behind it. I don't want you to accept that a compromise must be made, that in order to live, you need to sacrifice something. In most cases, it's the truth. And for now, here, it is too. But what comes after doesn't have to be. I don't know when yet. Something tells me you're not safe out there because of what you were involved with. You might never be, and that's the consequence of a choice you made. I can't stop that. What I can do is at least prepare you for it. With the work you've been doing for me. There's more to a PI than doing research. It's about understanding what games people are playing, what they're capable of, and on some occasions, scenarios that might be impossible. It's all about give and take. We are selfish. We might not want to admit it, but we are. And that can make us predictable. I am selfish. You're here because of it. I didn't save you without wanting something in return. And people who save others get the satisfaction of knowing they were needed. A selfish desire to feel worthy of life. Not all transactions are material. It's not pessimism. I've known enough people to see the pattern. Through my years investigating and going through my grandfather's files, majority of the time there's a drive behind every action. Doing this for money, going there for attention, doing that for glory. It's always something. Me? Hmm, I'm not sure what my motivation is. That's the ironic part. I can look through someone's past, observe what they do, and identify what makes them tick because they speak through actions. It's much harder doing it for yourself because you know how complicated a reason can be. You want to figure me out. Okay. Let's see what you come up with. Mm-hmm. Ask your questions. Hmm. Because my grandfather's real successor died before he could take the position. And when it was just me and him in this house, he showed me what he did. I found it fascinating that he knew so much. No, it wasn't supposed to be me, but I did it anyway. Is this a roundabout way of you getting to know more about me? I did set myself up, didn't I? Alright, then let's continue. 
When I was a kid, I liked architecture. I was never good at drawing, but I liked the finality of it. Almost, anyway. I mean, buildings last much longer than the person who made them. You tend not to know the architects, you just see their design for what it is, and that's what I wanted to do. I remember looking online at different cities the day I was introduced to Google Earth. I was amazed by how each country looked different, and you could tell just by looking at the buildings they had. And that interested me, maybe more than I thought. Exactly, it's like a physical mark on the world. I do like my job, though it comes with dangers. People can be dangerous. I think you're right in that assumption. I've seen what happens when people get too close to something to be blinded by what's right in front of you. Yes. Even though I was still a little wary, in college I felt free of danger. Or at least that's what I wanted to think. I allowed myself to be vulnerable, and I've rarely been able to do that since my parents died. You're really taking this seriously, aren't you? <sighs> Reading people is definitely a skill you need for life. No matter what, it'll help you. I don't put my trust in anyone but myself. Because people have a habit of breaking it. Yes, that's why I work alone. But that's obvious. What do you think my motivation is? I'm curious. Hmm. I think you've improved with your observations. You have your reasons and your evidence. I don't know if you're right. Well, I can say the money isn't what I'm after, so you're right about that. But saving people? I don't know. I would understand you saying that if I was a lawyer, but being a PI means investigating for those that can afford you. And normally it's about menial things. Uh, a cheating spouse, missing money, finding blackmail. Nothing that warrants saving people. Hmm. Maybe that's true. Maybe I do endure the mundane to wait for a job that matters. To have enough knowledge and connections to deal with it properly. What my grandfather kept to himself, that is world-changing. And he kept it admirably. I hope to be as honorable despite what I do. <laughs> I think you scratched the surface. When it comes to humanity, we all follow some type of purpose. A lot of us have dreams that we work towards that can explain the choices we make. Others have things to protect, things to hide. I know a lot of people who come to me thinking I just dig for information and that's all there is to my job. But you need to know who you're investigating, how they think, who they're around, and what their drive is. Only then can you figure out the why. I wouldn't say it's bad dissecting humans. I always see what they're capable of, and it keeps me humbled. Seeing their worst doesn't repel me. It's a reminder of the risks we take when letting someone else in. Either they'll disappoint, betray, or sadden you. And if your luck is unfortunate, they'll drag you down with them. I recognize the other side. Love and warmth and... belonging... Two sides of the same coin. A coin I'd rather do without. Then I shall remain an enigma to you. It normally takes months of research to develop an understanding of someone else, but I think you've done well. Speaking of, how's the case coming? You think you're almost finished? Hmm, I'm intrigued to see. Let's see. You ruled out all his work associates and close friends, which was likely. 
You circled the parent and the eldest and youngest child. Why? Hmm. Finch is close with his mother, but so are the rest of his children. Which page? Now this is interesting. Finch had an older brother with a degenerative disease and died at the age of three. And for the most part, it was swept under the rug by the mother. I wonder if he knew he wasn't the firstborn. <laughs> I see you asked that too. So he does think that. Which will make you wonder if his mother would want the same fate for her great-grandchild. Does she really? You're right, she has been giving the money to the daughter, because Finch won't. Honestly, this all looks rather cut and dry, but I would suggest looking a little deeper. Make sure you check all your facts, double check, then check them again. When you've done that, I'll go through all of your work and see what conclusion you came to. No, I think you're doing well. But this is a test case for you. If someone's job is to investigate and they bring their client the wrong information, all credibility is gone. No one will want to hire you, least of all trust you. Well, it looks like you're getting interested in this kind of job, so I'm willing to give some freebies. Some advice that might help you when you leave. What? You won't be here forever. I'm not keeping you as a prisoner, you're my employee and I'm keeping you safe. I know that you might have grown used to this life and at first I could tell you were wary. You didn't know me, I literally picked you up off the street so you could come work for me. You were probably thinking the worst. But I can tell you're comfortable here which is what I want. For now this is your home and I want you to treat it as such. Within reason. I don't know what'll happen after either. When I took you in, I didn't really think that far. All I wanted was someone to make sure the house stayed clean and for me to be able to focus on my work without having to do much else. My job requires as much time as I can sacrifice. With clients all over the world, I need to make sure I have work ready no matter the time zone. First and foremost, my clients are customers, so I have to accommodate that. Not to mention, if their problem is local, I need to contact companies within the times they operate. Thankfully, most of them live in the States, but there are some from other countries that require more planning. I never have time for myself. The only time I recently have was when we had that movie night. No, I enjoyed it a lot, but I still feel bad about falling asleep during the second one. I was a little tired, but I thought I'd be able to handle it. It's been a long time since I've sat there watching something without doing any type of research. I will admit, it was pretty nice. And it was nice of you to let me sleep there. I felt guilty not doing any work, but my body was much more honest. I don't know what'll happen when you leave. I haven't really given it much thought because it feels rather natural now. We both have our routines, we've adapted to it. You're getting better at cooking and the house. It looks good, it's less hollow. I'm glad you like it here, but I don't want you thinking you're going to be living here forever. Because you have a life, it's on pause now so you can have enough money to do what you want, and you would have earned it properly. If it were anyone else, I would have given them the same treatment. Why are you looking at me like that? Wait, did you expect to stay here longer? I didn't have a set time in mind, but I always knew that your position wouldn't be permanent. I don't kidnap people and force them to stay longer than needed. No, no, that, that's not what I meant. I'm not going to discard you as if you're trash. You're much more than that. 
I tried doing things by myself. There's a certain amount of trust I have to put into people no matter what, otherwise I wouldn't be able to do anything. So for a while, I managed. But I started more cases, and I realized that I couldn't do much on my own. Not with my workload. When I found you, I didn't go out searching for someone I could employ. You just happened to be there. And what would you have done had I not? You'd probably be dead. No, I'm not looking for a thank you. I don't want it. What I want is for you to like it here for however long you stay. Well, I... I didn't really calculate for you wanting to stay here. I thought that I could relieve you of your previous debts, you'll make money working for me, and when I deem it safe for you, you'd leave with your pay and we'd part ways. No attachments. That's what I wanted, yes. It's easier that way. It is. I learned the hard way what happens when you get too close to people who either take advantage of your trust or are put in harm's way. You only hurt yourself either way, so what's the point? My cynicism is how I get through life. All I need is my job to focus that. That... that's out of the question. Loneliness is a mindset, and I can live like that. It doesn't matter about me being happy, it's about keeping others safe. Of course that includes you. You think I'm heartless enough to just let something happen to you? The kiss has nothing to do with it. Even if I never touched you or spoke to you, you'd be under my protection regardless. What do you want from me? You're prying. Like you want me to say something specific. I don't know, you tell me. What, have you got an attached to your lifestyle? You want me to tell you to stay? Is that it? It is. <clears throat> I know you've been here for some time. Maybe enough that you're used to this kind of life. I know it was hard for you before, and here, things are straightforward. You have... A roof over your head, a bed to sleep in every night, you have food, you have some kind of entertainment, and money by the end of it. Sounds a lot better than how you were living, worrying about when you were getting your next paycheck and whether to sacrifice rent or dinner. But here you're confined to this building, you're not allowed out, you can't meet new people, you're stuck inside with me and I'm not the best company. I'm the only company you have. I can't think about the future when my thoughts are rooted to now. Let's leave it at not knowing how long you're going to be here, okay? I won't be coerced into saying what you want to hear. Sure, we've shared some... moments, but I can't think about sharing a part of my life in a domestic way. No, you've been working. It was nice that you wanted to pay respects to my family, and I thank you for that. But first and foremost, you are an employee, and you work for me. Letting emotions influence your decisions is a recipe for disaster. What? What are you talking about? Yes, I do enjoy your company, and you've become a part of my daily life. Yes, but there's a difference between living at work and working together as a domestic unit. You think they're both the same? They're not. I provide stability, protection, and shelter. In exchange, you maintain the house and do chores. You had no choice but to do it, so if this particular agreement is no longer working for you, then you're more than happy to... <sighs> Hold on. Didn't bother sending Vic this time? What? His body washed up yesterday by Brennan Resort. Brennan Resort. Do you know who did it? His last assignment was infiltrating the pen, so I assume it was them. Did he find something out? In a last voicemail he sent to me, he said that their preparations for the first requiem is almost complete. I'll call you all in his voicemail. 
But that would be helpful. Thank you. I will. A Asriel? Hmm. He was a good man. He was. I have work to do, but I'll send you all the information promptly. Of course. Do you remember that man you served? Vic? Apparently he's dead. For investigating and being caught. I never would have... I mean, he was a professional. He's done work like this countless times. Either something else happened or we've underestimated the penance. I've known him for a long time. We know our jobs are dangerous, but it's still surreal when we die in the line of duty. He thought that. I know he liked doing it. Vic used to tell me stories of what he'd done, where he'd been. That man could charm anyone, and because he was so knowledgeable, he could convince the most stubborn and skeptical people that he'd done this and that. Yes, he's the best liar I was the best liar I knew. And strangely enough, I trusted him. Well, this is what happens when you do this kind of work. Some organizations hide themselves for good reason, because they know if their actions were brought to light, they could lose everything. So they get help from people who cover it up, and make sure anyone who wants to expose that is eliminated. No matter what side you're on, Knowledge is all it takes to make you a target. For my grandfather, he didn't want to share knowledge. For Vic, pursuing knowledge led to his death. Maybe. I still need to figure out the details. Maybe it'll happen to me someday, too. Who knows? I'm too deep into it now. Besides, I have nothing more to lose. My life isn't worth much. I pry into others and get paid to do it. Sometimes it's for good. But most of the time people want their curiosity sated or need information to get a one-up on someone else. And when you deal with vicious marks, to them the messenger is to blame. I need to be vigilant for both our sakes. I involved you when you had no say in the matter, and that fault completely lies with me, I know. But associating you further is not what I want to do. No one knows you're my assistant. Now, technically, only one person knows you're even here. And he wouldn't jeopardize your safety. Because he needs me. Probably more than ever now that Vic's gone. Good. I'm glad you get it now. I've been as honest as I can with you. Okay, ask your question. What? You think you figured me out? <sighs> Maybe you're right. Maybe... I try to keep you at arm's length so you don't get hurt. What, do you think I do it so that I don't get hurt? No, it's... No, no. I don't need to connect with anyone. I've been perfectly fine without caring. Yes, I care for strangers. But if someone put a gun to their head and said I needed to give away all my research, I'd let them pull the trigger. And I'd feel guilty about it, but I knew it would be in the world's best interest. The truth... The truth is, maybe, I don't want to find out if I'll fail where my grandfather succeeded, at, at the greatest cost. You think there's more to it? Like what? <laughs> it looks like you do have the knack for this kind of job. I've... 
I don't think I have the capacity to lose anyone else. You're sharp. I can see why you did so well with Finch's case. You want to help me with this one? Hmm, you're right. One case at a time. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry. Can you make me another cup of coffee? It's probably cold now. Uh, <coughs> yep, definitely cold. Thank you. For putting up with my demands and everything else. No, you're doing more than your job. It was naive of me to think that you would keep our relationship as strictly work, because it's not. We live in the same house, so it's almost impossible to keep it as two separate things. Even I... Even I'm having some difficulty. I don't normally talk about my own truths, but... When I'm walking around to stretch my legs or find something I need, hearing you in the kitchen is... soothing. Even hearing your footsteps when I'm in my study is... Yes, it... It reminds me I'm not alone. That the house is still breathing in one way or another. I'm glad you like the work. I'm glad you like me too, but I think... <sighs> Could we talk about this later? I need to take care of this now. A different brew. Uh, sure, I'll try something new. Hmm, thank you. I'll look over the Finch case later. If you want to double check your work, then feel free to do so. If you want to make some food, you can. Surprise me. I think I'll be in here for quite a while today. Yes, you can join me after, as long as you stay quiet. Try not to cut yourself making it. 